Well, welcome everybody. We're glad you could spend some time with us today. We are going to do a, a quick uh, webinar about elevating your fundraising and making this the ultimate live auction guide. So I want to introduce you to uh, myself and our presenters today. I'm Louis Murad with Murad Auctions. Um, I've been in the auction business for about 24 years, just about. I do nothing but benefit auctions. And uh, so I've been fortunate to have a partner with uh, Matt Brunell from uh, ClickBid, and he is here too, Matt. Hey, thanks, Louis. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm Matt Brunell, founder and CEO of ClickBid. Uh, started a started the uh, journey of fundraising back 22 years ago and have been doing that ever since. Excited to have a partner with uh, Murad Auctions and you're going to learn a lot. Uh, Lewis has a, just a ton of information and it's all incredibly good and excited to see how you guys use it. Okay, so let's uh, let's go through uh, today's agenda. So we're going to talk and not necessarily in this order, we're going to talk about cool games and things we can do in our live auction. We're going to talk about live auction, auction strategies, and I'll add to that best practices. So we'll have best practices there. Um, and then we're going to talk about technology and corporation incorporating hybrid event structure, which is something great that ClickBits put together. And then we'll have some time at the end for you guys. Uh, we'll probably end up talking about 40, 45 minutes and have time for chat and uh, questions at the end. So we look forward to having that. Um, <clears throat> So let's get started. Um, let's see what's next. Uh, we have this slide in here. If you want to have a successful fundraising event, hire an auctioneer that looks something like this. I guess, I don't know, that's an old joke, so I just left it in there. All right, why, seriously though, why hire a professional auctioneer? What is, what's the difference? What makes it work? Why do it? Why not get the guy who sells cars on Saturday night be your auctioneer? Um, you need somebody who's professional, who understands how to engineer a live auction, what a giving like, what knows when to speak, what knows the timeline looks like, what items to sell, helps you engineer your giving moments, and understands what the nonprofit mission is about. We're going to get more into detail of these things today, but I want us to definitely understand what we make a difference with for our company and what we do for live auction. Because if you don't, if it didn't make a difference, anybody would do it. And I think we make a difference with live auction. So let's keep going. What are some of the strategies we like to talk about? And we're going to run through all these today. What makes a difference to use bid panels? And I'm going to run through this slide, but I want to take a minute. Bid panels are so important. You know why? When you check in with ClickBid and everybody checks themselves in or they check in at the front of the event, their bidder panel becomes their card key for the night to bid on and to buy everything because it's all in the software. You can buy raffle tickets. You can buy heads or tails games that we play live auction games, which we're going to talk about. You can get the raffle because all those things are in the software. And the minute that you give your number out, it's like a cruise ship effect. You will have the opportunity to bid at the end of the night. You don't realize you spent more money than you thought and you're happy to do it because it's that easy. So we want bidder numbers. Um, during the live auction, what are some things we need to make sure? Sound system. Don't get there the day of the event and say, how's the sound system? Do we have a wireless mic? Because the auction will prefer a wireless mic. Does it walk around? Is there room to walk around in the room among the guests? Certain people like to be called out. So do we want to walk around? Bring the lights up. You know, we have dinner lighting. So after dinner is a good time to start live auction. Bring the lights up. Make sure sound's clear. Make sure you're louder than the team. Now, some of these school auction events you get into, they are happy to talk over you because they haven't seen each other since carpool today and they want to make sure they get it all going. So great opportunity to make sure you're louder than them and they can hear the auctioneer. Um, professional bid spotters can make a huge difference. You know what they are? The, we call them ringmen or bid spotters. They're the guys in the room who are the sub auctioneers who are bringing in the bids. Hey, Joe, it's only 4,500. Let's do this for the kids. The bid spotters in the room are huge and they cover the areas that the volunteer spotters don't. In fact, most of the time you see the volunteer bid spotters are there for a couple of minutes and then they're at the bar. And they're like, where are the bid spotters? <laughs> Where'd they go? I don't know, Matt, if you run into this, but I, I've had those where they're just... <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Now, Matt's a good bid spotter. He was at one of my events recently and he helped me out because we... <laughs> and let me tell you something. He, he, he gets the bidders going. So anyway, he, he's multi-talented. Anyway, um, uh, they also will help sell items that can be doubled and they know what the costs are 
on items that might have a consignment cost. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. But you've got to get over the consignment cost, but maybe don't want to start above it. So bid spotters facilitate all those things. So these are all very important pieces. And um, we're going to go through some more details as we go down the list here. But I want you guys to know um, about these items. Now, when should you hold the live auction during an in-person event? Very big question because people have a lot of agendas they want to do. So let's talk about the perfect time frame. And you guys may want to write some notes on this, but let's just say that the doors open at six. You got a four or five hour event, right? The doors open at six. We want to give everybody, if we have alcohol at the event, which some people do, some people don't, but if there is, we want everybody to be able to mingle, have a drink. Maybe we have past appetizers. We're going to give them an hour to an hour and a half before the dinner bell. Now, if we're serving a seated dinner, we've got full control. So what we do is we let everybody have some drinks. We let them browse the silent auction area. Um, we might make some announcements. There should be a slide showing the room, showing what's going on. About an hour and a half. Here, here's the rule. Though. You have three hours to get the money in a, in a live auction gala or gala, I have to say. You got three hours. So somewhere in the middle is live auction. It's not the last thing on the agenda. Don't give out the awards, do speeches. It's not a night for speeches. So somewhere in the middle. So George open at 6, 7.30 to we'll see you for dinner. By 8 o'clock, we should be doing the live auction. It's not time to have a dinner and speeches. There's two times to speak in an event. One is the welcome, thank yous, and then once dinner's served, it's time to get started with live auction. So here's why we're here. Show the video, tell the story, ask for the dollars that you need in the live auction in the front of it. And any of you guys who are on here today that want details, I'll be happy to send you out what I think is the perfect timeline. Email me, call me, text me, whatever it is. You don't have to hire us to get information. I'll tell you everything I know. So check with me on that, but I'm very strong about when I think the live auction should happen. Now let's talk about ways in which we can build a profitable live auction. What are the items that are selling? Now these are, you know, we work with the same companies year over year. Some of them we work with for over 20 years. But everybody wants to know what's selling, what's happening. And there's a key, there's sort of a, um, there's sort of a, a few things that we need to know about to be successful in live auction. So what we're looking for, and I've got some slides that kind of show us, but I'm going to talk through these slides. I want something that is absolutely exclusive. Can't get this anywhere but here. Uh, our uh, the, the quarterback of the Cowboys goes to our school. He's going to stand out front, and he's going to have dinner with five, four families. Okay, you can't get that anywhere else. Maybe you don't want dinner with that. The point I'm making is um, I want something nobody else can get. I have a signed baseball from the world championship team. That's exclusive. Not everybody can get that. I have a baseball that was hit out of the park on game seven of the World Series. That's exclusive. I want a lifetime experience. You're going to go to this fabulous place. So Daytona, uh, Disney. People don't, people want to have wine. They want to, they want to do wine experience. Did you know there was a safari in the wine country in the, in the Sonoma Valley? There it is. Okay. Uh, we're having great luck with Italy. People are ready to get out of town now that the COVID thing has passed us. And so I just did this trip last year, but you have a culinary experience in Tuscany, looking over the hills of Tuscany. And a chef comes in, speaking only Italian, and tell you what he's cooking for dinner and what and, and how he makes it and how he browns the meat and how he does. And you don't care because you're having wonderful wine. And then you just say, please just bring it to me. But it's an experience. And so... Luxury Italian cooking experience. Now, you may say, well, where do you get these? Well, we these packages are available, and I think Matt has them on his website. We have some on ours. We can guide you through experiences that you don't get donated, which are no-risk auction packages, and we and, and we can talk about how we make it work, um, why these make money, and why these can send somebody. One of the things you want to do is you want to check with people in your organization and see where they're going on vacation this year. Oh, you're, you're going to 30A, you're going to drive, you know, people in Texas get in a car and they drive down to Destin, Florida every year. So if you got one of those, it's out of a different budget because it's out of their, their budget for vacation, not their auction budget. Um, so these kind of trips, trips of a lifetime, 
exclusive experiences, um, chefs, dinners, they do very well. Uh, we had a great, you know, Taylor Swift came through last year. You know, she is in charge of the USA now. So Taylor Swift came in. And when we get Taylor Swift tickets, we were getting so much money for where people donate Taylor Swift tickets and boxes for Taylor Swift. Hey, that was a once experience. George Strait concerts. Oh, my gosh. I can get so much money for a George Strait concert. I can't even tell you. So it depends on who's coming around. The Eagles, ball, who, you know, concerts do well. Sporting events do well. Um, may not want to see the Cowboys for a while after last week, but other people are, are popular. So anyway, I'm in Dallas, so I'm just one of those suffering fans. Okay. <laughs> um, these are things that sell. And you may have been through this too, man. You may have some of these opportunities. I mean, you know, I don't know if your team's still going or not, but. Oh yeah, baby, the the Lions. Oh, uh, well, okay. The Lions are in a lot better shape than we are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, said so that in a while. Right. Private chefs dinners do very well if you know a chef. If the I have a school where they have a chef who has a great restaurant, and he donates a chef dinner. It brings several thousand dollars, and we're just talking about the cost of a few bottles of wine and food. And here's what you can do with these. We can offer them, hey, chef, thanks for donating that dinner that brought $8,000. Can we do a second one? We'll pay for the food and the wine. Well, what did that cost? Six hundred, seven hundred. We got six, seven, eight thousand for it. Ask for the second one. Can we get the second one? What does that cost? Don't ask them to donate it again. Then they'll likely say, I'll donate it again anyway. But try to get the second one on Sundays because chef dinner is great. Now, in certain parts of the country, Hunting experiences, shooting experiences. Depends on if that's something your organization would go for, but those things sell. Um, so in, in the Texas area, for instance, and some other areas across the country, we do a lot of shooting experiences. Um, this particular one I'm showing you here had John Wayne Walden, who was a decorated Green Beret, who would take you out to his own ranch and show you how to fire off great different kinds of, and tell his war stories and how he's a great hero and he builds his own guns and he would pay a lot of money. So this was a package for 10 at this lodge where you could go and he would show you the sheep. This thing brought $15,000, $20,000. And it was really nothing in it but a bag of bullets and uh, a chuck wagon dinner. <laughs> so, so these will do well because you can't get it. You can't get it anywhere. He's only there for certain experiences. Uh, but people, we love our veterans and uh, it's great to be able to support one or two. I'll be with one, and that is a very popular thing. And then, like I said, people get in the car and they drive. Like we go to we go to Cabo every year. So if you got a Cabo trip, I'm going to go anyway. I'll buy your Cabo Cabo trip. People want to go to one weather destinations. People want to call go to Colorado and ski, especially people stuck in the warm weather states like Texas in the summer. You want to be in Colorado in the summer. So we do that. We want to get out of town. We want to go see where they, uh, you know. Uh, where they filmed certain films or uh, everybody wants to, to be in Wyoming now because of Yellowstone. I had a Yellowstone package. I was on, you know, I was on stage with one of those Yellowstone characters not long ago and he offered a trail ride to Yellowstone for about $100,000. Okay, what did we get? He didn't even know what he was offering, but people want to be with these characters that they see on TV. So anytime you can get these exclusivities or you've got a fabulous destination or you've got a chef's dinner or you've got something that puts people in a place they can't otherwise get, those are live auction items. And then the same thing goes with things we haven't talked about here, which is that, you know, it's a school or it's a church and the favorite pastor is here or the pastor is resigning and he's going to have his last dinner. Those will bring a lot of money. Dinner with a headmaster brings a lot of money. Uh, dinner with your favorite celebrity. Being coached for the day at the Little League team. You need to be on the, on the field with a coach or be the water boy for the high school football. There's a lot of things you can do that don't cost anything. We get more money than for parking spaces in a school you can't get to. You can't imagine how much those things bring. So there's all kinds of things you have access to that cost nothing or very little that you can pull out and make a lot of auction items. So consider these. Now, what else can we do? Let's make it interesting. Now, there's a lot of cool games we can play. So we can look at um, what that looks like. People love a heads or tails game. Well, what is it? If you don't know, now, a lot of you guys have probably seen heads or tails. I'll go through these really quick. Um, the heads or tails game is simple. You get a prize. Um, you offer an opportunity for everybody to kind of warm into the auction. So before the live auction, I start with a game. 
let's do heads or tails. Okay, the prize for heads or tails today is a $500 gift card on American Airlines. $25 to join. All you have to do is raise your bid or paddle in the air. I'll write it down and we'll tap it into the ClickBid software. We've got your money. Just play. So that's another reason I need those bid or paddles to be attached to a credit card to be assigned to the software. Now, you don't have to play heads or tails. You can do it as a... Um, you can do it as a spinning wheel. Now, I believe, Matt, that in the software, you have an opportunity to just draw those numbers once they've been entered. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you can do this within the software. We actually have a spinning wheel now. You can throw it up on the screen, and the spinning wheel puts the people's names, and you're the winner. You know, So the, there's so many different forms of what I call heads or tails, but it can be, it can be a pull. It can be a draw. Uh, we did it one time where we sold keys to a car, but only one of them started the car. So $100 for keys to the car, somebody donated a Jeep. We sold the keys, and if your key started the Jeep, you got it. Or we might do um, a diamond draw where everybody gets a cubic zirconium pair of earrings, but one of them are real diamonds. Everybody pays 100 they get a little something, but somebody gets the real diamond earrings. And the jeweler's there. So you advertise the jeweler and he gets something and he donates the thing and everybody goes to his jewelry store and it's a win-win when you're trying to get sponsors, which is another thing uh, that this all leads to. Now, the paddle sweep is something we do kind of at the end. So let's just say we're doing donations and at the end we've got to the end of our donation and say, look, I'm going to take everybody's paddle up for a $100 donation, pass them to the middle and I'm going to give a prize. At the end, I got a trip to Vegas for two nights at the MGM Grand or whatever it is. Who will give me your, everybody turn your paddles in. I have the auction here, draw a paddle. I hand those to my check-in lady who taps it into the ClickBid software. And I've charged everybody 100 and I got a game without ever having to print any raffle tickets or do anything. I just use the bidder paddles at the end. Um, the live surprise is kind of a cool thing. I get a kick out of this. So what we do for live surprise is we do a, um, a and some people call it the golden ticket. But live surprise is you pay $100 or up to $250, I see. And you get, and you only sell 100 tickets, and you get an opportunity to steal one of the live auction items, which might be worth up to seven or $8,000 or $10,000. Now, I've seen it done where we took two decks of cards, a red deck and a, and a blue deck, and we had ladies walking around selling the cards, and they cut the card in half, put one in the bowl. Now, we take your bidder number down and put the software. But we put one in the bowl and hand you one. So if the red jack of spades comes up and that's the winner, you get the live auction prize. Once again, I don't need any, I don't need any uh, raffle tickets. I sold the cards. I put half of them in my bowl. I've taken your number down to bill you the hundred dollars and use your bidder paddle once again, the cruise effect, and you can do that one. Um, the golden pig is when you send a pig around the room. <laughs> Other auctioneer does it. I have not done this. But you, you send a golden pig around the room and you stuff it with dollars, see? And everybody puts a few dollars in it. And then they sell the pig. And they, they get to keep the money that's in the pig or you split the money with the house that gets in the golden pig. And what they do is they have, um, if you're the winner, your golden pig goes into a, a trophy case <laughs> that you're the winner of the golden pig. And then after 10 years, they put all the golden pigs and somebody wins a big, I don't know. It goes on and on. But there's all all kinds of ways to do the same thing with a golden envelope. You sell the envelope with the money in it. You, um, you know, uh, we can't do games of chance at these events, but usually uh, the gaming commission doesn't look at these games. We play at these fundraising events. So uh, check with your local lawyers before you do that. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is, okay, we got this great live auction. We have all our people coming. How are we going to market this? What are we going to do? What are or what are the ways we're going to do this? Well, most people need. Now we did this in a survey. I've seen this written more than once. Most people need to see and message at least six times to understand it. I want to make sure everybody has the live auction list in advance, if possible. So now, what are the ways that we can do it? Well, number one, in the old days, and I would say even today, a lot of people print. An auction catalog. Do we need to print a live auction catalog anymore? Maybe, but a lot of people do, and here's why. They sold sponsorships, and the sponsorships, they said, you, you're, 
you get your card in the catalog, and the catalog has the live auction. That's good. Look over the live auction. Let's just say, for instance, one of those precious dinners for 10 are in there. Well, I want to talk to people at my table and see if they'll each go a thousand dollars so we can bid five or six thousand dollars or eight or ten thousand dollars on this dinner for ten. I get my friends in advance. Now, can we send these out in advance? What's another way? We email the catalog out. Back in the old days, the kids used to bring home the brown envelope. That's dating me. Uh, we used to put the catalog in the, the kid would bring it home at the end of the week. They don't do that anymore. We email it or it's online. So here's the kit wrap them dinner for 10 or eight. Get the limo. Okay. You guys all in on this limo thing. So you work it out in advance. Um, you're on the website. But one of the great things about the, uh, clipping software is that it creates an auction web page, right? Matt, I mean, you, you're, you send everybody to the web page. Absolutely. Yep. And the web page is a landing zone and you can send a text message or an email and say, Hey, the live auction previews up, click here to see what you'd like. Or click here to buy your table, click here to buy your sponsorships. We create the page for you or say you create it, but the software is there. Now that page looks exactly like your website from the church, the school, whatever, whatever the organization, it looks like your page. You put your logos on it. It looks like, but there's the auction software. They can put their credit card in. They can buy their sponsors in advance. What else can you do? When you load it up, Matt, what else do we do in advance? Email, you know, one of the things that we like to um, promote is is the is the email marketing that you can do before the event. You mentioned the six times that right. you want to get in front of somebody. Um, once once you add these auction items, you have an automatic promotional piece. So if you have, say, eight, in this case, eight auction items, you now have eight separate email campaigns that you can send out to promote it. And it gives you a chance to thank a sponsor. It gives you a chance to show off a very specific item, you know, the one thing you want people to take away from it. And it gives right. you a chance to promote that landing page. So, you know, it's live auction items are an automatic marketing tool once you've, once you've located them. And then the sponsors that come along with them get an opportunity to get more exposure. It also gives you the details. So sometimes from the live auction, we don't give the you know, like all the blackout dates or um, all the only availables, but generally on the website and on your phone, when you're looking at it through the, the night of the event, it'll tell you all the details that may not, the auctioneer only has time to say 20 seconds for it. So you get the details of the Cabo trip and what's included, what's not. So I think that's that's another thing that's on the website. Oh, this is the next slide. Okay. Um, social media. Hey. The uh, school fundraiser is Saturday night. Everybody who's in the area, please come by. We're having so-and-so, the, the, the local band is coming. Um, you know, we have Emerald City Band and some other bands in town that are that are very popular. And some people will come and buy a ticket just to see the band. So, you know, social media is a good way to get other people to join your event. Um, you also got here, <clears throat> live auction displays are excellent. So you're walking in, you're checking in, you look to the left, and it gives you the details. It has the logo of the gala, of the gala. It's got the details of certain auction packages on easels as you come in. And you can see the one on the right has one with all the live auction items listed um, and a way to donate and a little bit more about each package in the live auction. So there's the Helping Hands from Rock Wall. Um, here's another way. We do digital programs now. There's a website you can go to, and you can embed this in your auction page, a digital program, and it, and it, and it flips open like a regular program, but it's all online. So you can do a paper program, as we talked about. You can do a digital program. I'll tell you what else a lot of people do. They put it on their bidder panel. You know, we print custom bidder panels for certain people. Here's Smiles Charity. And what they did was they did a front and back. So you're looking at the left side. They, this is interesting because they took the heads or tails game was a tear off. So you could tear off the heads or tails game. You notice your bidder numbers at the bottom one says heads or tails. There was two of those. You didn't see all of it in this picture. There's two heads or tails tear offs. All you have to do is hand it to the representative and we've got it. Now, if you want to see what the live auction items are, you look on the back of your bidder battle. So I didn't print anything because I've already got to print a bidder battle and I might put my top 
uh, like Audi and McKinney donated to this. I think they gave a car or something. Well, they are the top sponsor. They're on the bidder panel. Uh, on the right are the live auction items. Just enough to tell you which ones we're doing and what order they're doing in, because they're going to also show up on the screen. And before I get to that, let me tell you what that QR code does. So that QR code will take you to the web page so you can see the details of the live auction package. Ah, oh, there's another way to take you back to the website. Now, this is all in the ClickFit software. You create these QR codes, and they take you to the web page. Well, that's huge. Um, and you can go to, now, can you go to a certain item, or you go to all the live items? Where do those usually take you, Matt? Where do we go? It, it really depends on, you know, what, what QR code you'd like to use. Uh, you can certainly yeah. send them to the landing page where they can look at everything. You can send them to individual items as well. Yeah, you can go to individual items. I love it. So you can put a QR code on every, if you had displays, you can put a QR code on the displays that would take you to the details of that item. And then you bet on it right there on your phone. Yeah, that's genius. Okay, good. Uh, so... And then, of course, during the event, I've got to have a live auction slideshow, mostly because people who were at the bar are uh, are not sure they want to bid on the, the jewelry for their wife, but they're at the bar getting a drink and don't want to miss it. So it's got to be on the screen. I would number them as well. Like this is number seven. You can see in the top right. Um, it is the 16. You know, it, here's the details of this here necklace. Now, make sure and, and uh, understand we don't need fine print on the PowerPoint. Just really let me know what it is. And the deep, like I said, this is just about the most information I want on a live auction PowerPoint because I want the auctioneer to be paid attention to. And he will explain the details of what the carrot weight is, how many diamonds are in it, all that kind of thing. And then, but we do want the donors and we'll have the auctioneer highlight the donor, which will also be on the website. Now, I think you can also put the donors on your website and that, tell me this is true. Um, and click their, or could you click their logo and have it go to their web page? Is that, could we embed that? Or is that something we do? Yeah, you have the option of, you know, including links in the descriptions and sending people to the uh, the donor of the of the live auction item. Absolutely. Okay. It's a so great think about that when you're selling sponsorships. You can now offer an opportunity for the donated item to say, if you want to see the rest of our catalog, Click on the Willis Jewelry link below, and then they're going to get business. That's something we're selling them. It's the exposition to people who have enough money to spend money in a live auction, which ensures their client base. So this is a great opportunity to enhance your sponsorship package by offering something that our website can create for them. Great idea. Okay. Uh, so this brings us a little bit more to the live auction te technology. So there's a couple things we use now, and I, Matt's going to get into how it works in a minute, but I'm going to show you how we used it first, and then we're going to get into um, live auction technology, the live thermometers, and I'm going to talk about a successful giving moment. But let's talk about when the live auction's over, and this is when I like to do this. So people ask this question, you may ask it today. So I'm going to answer it now. The live giving moment in general follows the live auction. Hey, folks, you didn't get what you wanted in live auction. This is what we need for the kids this year. This is what we're trying to do. Make sure you convey the mission. I raised money for my kids' school for four years, and finally somebody came to me and said, what is this money going to? Articulate that. What are we raising the money for? Bring a person to stage who's been helped by the program, the scholarship recipient, the cancer survivor, a person who got helped whose life got turned around. Put pictures of them on the screen. Get commitments for each level. And I'm going to go through some screens that show these. Um, I do an event for the Boys and Girls Club. They put a timer on the screen. Hey, I got, let me tell you, folks, I got six minutes to raise 100000 So they're going to get the shepherd so to pull me off this stage if you don't get the money right now. Who's got the 100000 before I, my time has ended? Most people are happy to see me go. Like, I've heard enough from him. But, but it gives you a sense of urgency. And then put the goal up on the screen. We got ways to do that. Uh, and we're going to talk about services to a corresponding amount. So let's keep going. Um, I want to showcase the people that I serve. Now, this was in the last slide, but I want to demonstrate this. Here are the kids. Here are the kids that have been helped. Here's some displays that talk about youth of the year. What did we do? Who was helped? 
average of the advertising. Here's another great way. When I get, I don't know if you can read these numbers because it's kind of small, but the point I'm trying to make is here's what you can do for a donation of $2,500. A, a couple of school days, $1,000 uh, can help this many people. A personalized holiday box of work for the kids. Individuals with special needs, 250 provides financial support. Uh, 500 provides gifts of uh, anonymous for PGI, uh, pediatric cancer. And then I put that goal up on the screen. So there's a couple ways we can do it. This is a donation screen. And as we ask for donations at the end, this number continues to rise. Look, our goal is 300,000. We've raised this much. And look what's cool about this. I've advertised my top sponsors. Now, as part of the ClickBid software, if we tap in the donations in real time, they can show up on the screen. Now, not everybody can do this. This is another reason we need software to make something happen. And this is a great way to do it. Now, I'm going to show you in this next slide. Now, we had a fundraising event uh, that we did in which the names of the people donate and show up. Now, watch this uh, live auction. This is my son as the auctioneer. He did this event in Denver. They were trying to raise money for a church or school or church and school. And as he went through the donation levels, you see the mission goal at the top is $50,000. Now, people's names kept showing up. He is advertising the names of the people that go. And as he does, more people's names appear. Now, this was a hybrid event. People were in the room. People were also not in the room. They were at home because this was a COVID time event. So we had a little bit of both. As you can see, in about three to five minutes, he exceeds the $50,000 goal. So now he's got to say, let's try to get to 100. And, it, and the names continue. And he's calling out the names of people who are donating. And he goes, look, we're let's get to 100,000. We're a couple minutes away from 100,000. Now he's broadcasting this. And people are also live in the room because I can't leave now. I got to get to 100. And so in five or six minutes, people are there to make the difference and they love the action. People are screaming. He goes, gosh, I need $500 more to get to 100,000. He goes, there it is. There's 100. And he raised his hand. Now, this is all technology in a hybrid event matching everything else. And it was one of those amazing, amazing days. And Matt's going to talk about how this works in a couple of minutes. But I wanted to show you how you can either use the slide we had before, which was the, uh, let me see if I can, let's see, I got to get to the next slide here. There. So this is how you expand the ballroom. Now, Matt, uh, I think this is where you come in and talk about how do we make all this great stuff work? I think this is a good opportunity here. Yeah, thanks, Lewis. And, and you know, before I dive too far into it, I think, you, you know, one of the things that I've I've seen through the years is the the evolution of a small nonprofit event into you know large nonprofit events and and I hear a lot that some charities will say well we're not going to raise that much money or we're not going to do a very big event. In fact, um, my wife and I, our son's school, does an annual fundraiser and they do a silent auction, a little bit of a paddle raise, and it, it's a pretty small event. But one of the things that really separates the small events and the larger events the thing that brings you into those is is a live auction you're appealing to people um, at a different level than a than a silent auction and the way to make it work and I've, I've said this for years um and it's it's easier for me to say now that we have a relationship with someone like lewis is that your auctioneer is going to make the difference they know exactly they have the experience they've done this you know so many times they know how to bring people um, into this giving spirit and being able to, they know when to pull and when to push and when to move on and to do all the things. So, you know, this discussion, though I'm a tech nerd, it really is something very basic as bringing in a live auction, a live auctioneer, the games can't be overstated how valuable they can be. Um, the, you know, their way of kind of bringing in more raised money. So it's a, I, you know, I just, I, I don't want that to be overshadowed by anything else. That is a huge takeaway is, is this, you know, live auctioneer, um, live component of your, of your fundraising events. Having said that, um, you know, 
ever since the beginning of time, or well, let's just say not the beginning of time, the beginning of fundraising events, we've always had the challenge of getting everybody into the ballroom. We want to expand beyond the ballroom. And I asked this question, you know, does your nonprofit struggle with getting all of your donors in the same room? And, and yes, this is rhetorical. You know, you have a donor database of two, three, four, five, 15,000 people. There's no way you can put them inside of a ballroom. And so what we created was a product called EventStream. And EventStream allows you to very simply, in, in a nutshell, it lets you talk to your AV company and say, hey, if we give you a laptop with a web page, uh, and all it is is basically a Zoom window, can you take the video feed that you're already doing for the event and you're putting it up on the big screens? Can you send that out to everybody who is on our um, event landing page or who is bidding from home? And that is a very easy, I mean, for an AV company, that is a very, very easy question to answer because they're already doing it. They're sending that video feed to a projector, to a TV in the, in the lobby and so on. Now they're just sending it out to everybody um, you know, who can't attend, somebody who's maybe in a hotel room across the country on a business trip, but this is the first year they haven't been able to attend. But now you can broadcast that. And you can do all kinds of things with it. You can, you can uh, share a live auction. You can share a fund to need. You can share the program that everybody, uh, everybody is there to see. Now, if I'm across the country in a hotel room, I don't necessarily want to watch people, you know, standing at the bar or socializing or eating dinner. When the program starts, though, at 7 p.m., after the doors have opened and everybody's had their meal, that's when I want to message and using a service um, like ClickBid or you know, a mobile bidding platform to mass message your donors who can't attend to say, hey, the program starts in five minutes, tap on this link, participate in the live auction, participate in the fund to need, and watch the program from wherever you are. Now, we, uh, with our technology, we've been able to get that delay down to half a second. And it is serendipitous that, that Lewis is here today because what Lewis, uh, Lewis helped us build this during the pandemic. You know, he came to us and said, hey, we have a challenge. <laughs> you may have noticed that nobody's doing events right now. We need to be able to get this media out um, to everybody online. We still need to run events. We still need charities to raise money. So we created, we, we had to find something that was fast. If Lewis is looking for bids, whether he's standing in a ballroom or he's in his in his house on his in his studio calling for bids, he has to be able to receive them in real time. Just like we're on the Zoom call and it's very, 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 very fast. That's the same speed that we can provide with event stream. And so it's half of a second delay. And um, on the next on the next slide, you have a little bit different view of the um of the software. We broke it down a lot like, you know, we took advantage of uh, something that we knew worked, which is YouTube. And YouTube puts the video in the top third of the screen and lets you navigate and do things in the bottom two thirds of the screen. So while the auctioneer is talking to you, you are able to place bids in the live auction in real time. So when the auctioneer is calling out a bid in the room, you're, you're receiving a button on your screen that lets you place a bid and compete with that's the amazing. friend of yours that's sitting in the room, you're outbidding them and vice versa. And it's incredible when you can bring in, we actually, one of the, one of the best examples was, and, and this is another thing that you can't overstate, an auctioneer sold a live auction item and was able to sell a second one to the person at home because the person at home just missed out on it. And they were able to receive it for that second, that second bid. So not only did they raise, I don't remember, I think it was, actually, I think it was $11,000. It was $11,000. Not only did they raise $11,000 for the first item, they raised $11,000 for the second item. So it's an immediate boost of, of revenue for the organization. It's, it's huge. And it was because that person was driving up the bids from home that we got them to that number. So it's allowing, again, on the slide, it's allowing people who are out of town, can't make it, to be able to participate from anywhere in the world. And so on the next screen, we have a couple of, we have a screenshot of how this works. We try to keep it crazy simple. At ClickBid, that's kind of our motto is crazy simple. And you add your live auction items just like you would in an in-person. What, what we want to do is give people the ability to expand beyond their ballroom without having to expand the amount of energy they put into it. So we really want to, you're already adding live auction items to your event. You're already working with 
an auctioneer. We want you to be able to use the same resources that you've already acquired to let people participate uh, from home and, and really to be able to join in the program, the live auction, the fund of need from home. And so in this screen, you can see, you know, there is somebody, you have somebody, a spid spotter, like Lewis said, again, somebody who's who's working with the auctioneer to add those bids from home and act as that concierge bidder, the representative for everybody at home. When they see a bid come in, they wave their paddle in the air. Again, we don't want to well, make this harder for the live auctioneer. We want to make this the same experience for the live auctioneer so that any auctioneer can make this work. Well, and the auctioneer is looking at this screen. So as I'm selling, I'm looking and seeing the bids come in in real time on my screen. So then I say, well, I've got an internet bidder. The people in the room are out. Or sometimes it's only internet. But you can see all the bids, just like the, the screen itself becomes your bid spotter. In some cases, you're watching them come in. And it's all online. Exactly. Yep. We make this available to the live auctioneer. We make it available to the, to the bid spotters so that it can all, again, just fit right into the standard process that you're used to using. And then, you know, obviously moving on from the live auction, like Lewis said, anybody who wasn't able to win a live auction, we're looking to raise funds. We're looking to raise funds to, in my case, for the school that, that I'm working with, trying to bring in a live auctioneer, we're looking to carpet the whole school. It's, uh, it's been a while and they need new carpet. So we're looking to raise $90,000. And we're, gonna, we're going to open this up to everybody in the room. And Lewis, you know, is obviously an expert at this. He's been doing this for decades. He, he starts at, you know, $2,500 or $5,000 and looking for two or three people to give $5,000. Usually you have kind of a, kind of somebody who's a, who's placed in there to, to really get the thing going. Somebody who's already committed, right. you use them right. to kickstart that, to that 5,000. And then you get a couple more and then you work down to uh, 2,500. Then you look for those and maybe 2,500 is not the right number. Maybe a thousand dollars is the right number. And you, sure. you make those buttons again, because we're showing you the video in real time, it's happening live. So you can see it with no delay. You can give, you can press a $2,500 button from again, that hotel across the country and your name will show up on the screen instantly. And everybody in the room will see it. You'll see it. It's just kind of this aha moment where it's like, holy cow, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I was bummed that I couldn't make the event, but I actually got to participate. They they received my donations. Again, because these people are connected to your charity, you want to continue to engage them so that they don't lose that connection. Yep. And then you, you record those in-person paddles. You see those donations come in from home and you can put it all together in a very simple way on that screen. And just as a did you know, you know, we collect a lot of data at ClickBid and we can, you know, we found that the average donation and our platform is $500. Now, if if one or two people from home gave those $500, imagine that you're you're receiving even more money for your charity just by opening up, taking the the live video feed that you already have, and just making it available online. It's it's it will opening your event. I I love saying this: opening your event to more people will raise more money. It's just a mathematical equation. It really will happen, and so. It, it Matt, okay. we've also had it where donors were infirmed or they were at home. They said, but I want to be part of the event. They said, well, good, we'll open up a stream and put you in. Or the grandparents who are across the country who have money because they're not putting their kids through school or having to donate and participate. But they're in California and you're in Texas or you're in New York and it goes across the country. Exactly. And that's it's an interesting uh, I hadn't thought of it until just now. But, you know, I was thinking about my mother and my, my father who, you know, love love their grandchildren. They want to support them. And uh, I, I tell people when we talk about the history of ClickBid that I grew up on a dirt road in the country, and now my parents still live there, and that dirt road has uh, fiber internet. It doesn't have a paved road yet, but they have fiber internet, and it's That's faster everything. than my internet at home. And so now they can watch my event from home without having to come in and leave the house. I mean, it's they, you know, that is the, the technology is just everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. And so on that next slide, um, you know, there's a term that I've started to, to use over and over again, because I think it really kind of brings in that concept of, of uh, venue. So we call your online, your landing page, your event website, we call it a virtual venue. And your, your, your events in the future, from today forward, you have the capability of having two venues. One of them, of course, is in person. 
at a beautiful you know, hotel or conference center or school. And the other one is online and it's virtual. So we call it your virtual venue. And from there, your virtual venue can immediately get to work selling tickets to the event, giving away sponsorship information to people who have already um, contributed as a sponsor, letting people become a sponsor, letting people register for the silent auction and submit their own auction items. Securing auction items is hard. And so you can make a form available on your virtual venue where you can receive auction items, pictures, fair market values, descriptions. I mean, it's all it's all there. It's you, you didn't have to do any of the work, maybe make a phone call or two. You can show off an auction preview before the event. You can give event details. Like Lewis said earlier, that, that auction preview does a lot of the work of giving people the details, blackout dates, exceptions, so that it doesn't have to be repeated during the event and you can focus on the fundraising. And then of course, you can receive the donations, you can let people bid, and because it's a venue, you can let people participate in the event. So it's really how we think about that uh, going forward into the future. The pandemic forced us to think about it, but it really has always been available in that ability. In fact, on this screen right here, I, I really love, I hadn't, you know, um, I have a really great uh, marketing uh, individual who put this together and this, you know, these photos and, and Lewis and his team put this together. And this photo is really, really, it's, it's, it's almost exactly what I would want people to see is that from a phone, that technology in our pocket, we carry this thing everywhere. In fact, we probably carry it around more than our wallets these days. And that phone allows me to participate in an event. That phone is how nonprofits are connecting with donors these days. Most, you know, your nonprofits are, are your, your donors are connecting with you through their phones on an incredible, um, on an incredible basis. And we can make that available during the event. And so they get to experience the live event. They get to bid in the live auction. They get to bid in the silent auction. They can participate in the paddle raise. In, in, in the lighter blue, the key to making it all work, it's simple enough for the AV team. You can do this with an iPhone. I could turn this into my broadcast device, making, you know, these phone cameras are amazing. An iPad, a web camera like I have here on top of my computer, uh, I can, these can all broadcast and all it takes is a website and a start button and you're broadcasting to everybody out into the world who are your donors that just can't attend because they're either double booked, they're out of town, they're not feeling well and so on. It's, it will, like I said, it will increase giving just like in the early days when we started doing mobile bidding, mobile bidding increases your auction totals and hybrid events in those you know, expanding beyond your ballroom will increase giving and engagement in the same exact way. Excellent. Excellent. And so the the last uh, the last slide is just some observations that I've seen. You know, over the last couple of years, um, you know, we're talking. There's there's a deeper deeper discussion about the you know the up and coming generations and how they engage nonprofits. Um, you know, sharing existing videos. You you can share them throughout the weeks before the event, you can put them on your virtual venue to get people engaged, to get people to see the story. Story is, is key to engaging your donors. Um, and one of the reasons why auctioneers are so successful is they're great storytellers. They're great at pulling out the emotional truth of everything you're trying to do as a nonprofit. And then, um, you know, we're seeing organizations kick off um, events earlier. You know, the event might be on Saturday, but we start the event on Monday. And because we're using the live broadcasting piece and we're using a virtual venue, we can actually, just like I'm sitting here in my office, as the director of the foundation, I can just hit start and I can welcome everybody at 8 a.m. on Monday morning to the event and do a giveaway so that anybody who tunes in at eight o'clock on Monday morning to listen to Matt, welcome you to our upcoming event, will be entered into a giveaway for the uh, for a $500 gift card to, you know, uh, Applebee's. That'd be a lot of food because five hundred dollars. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a hundred dollars. Um, and I've got another one, Matt, for the end. So we do we do a repeat of the broadcast on the Facebook page, not closing the silent auction until the next day. When the rebroadcast comes, you get double the the donations at the end because it's it's like it's fresh again. Exactly. Yep, we've seen organizations do that too, where they they will do the event on Saturday, but the auction will close, the silent auction will close on Sunday. And yes, because you have those materials now that you've recorded the broadcast, you can put that 
online and you can get more life out of it with YouTube, Facebook, like you said, you know, those things are, it's, it's incredible what kind of material you can get. The other, uh, the other thing that I've seen people do, and I actually did this last year at uh, our event was you can live stream the event prep, the rehearsals. If you have a big, you know, a band yeah. performing and they do a, do a rehearsal, yes. send out, you're using your mass messaging. You can send out a yeah. message that says, Hey, everybody, guess what? We're actually getting a sneak peek at the event that we're preparing for you tonight, starting at six o'clock, go online, play some bids and watch a tech rehearsal of everything that's being set up. And it's just, it's again, it's kind of like a behind, everybody loves the behind the scenes. They like to see how movies are made. They like to see how, you know, the Oscars are, are created and they like to see how your event is built. And these, it's so incredibly simple. Web camera, a laptop that's connected to the internet and boom. And so again, and then obviously expanding the reach of your in-person gala. I, I always, you know, just go back to that and repeat it because it really is just back to the basics. If I have a donor database that has seven, 8,000 people in it, how can I consider seven, 8,000 people to be guests at my event? Typically, you have to say, well, there's probably about 400 people that'll come to my event of that 7,000. Well, how can I think of all of them as potential guests? Because now I'm removing every single barrier for them to participate in my event. It really is, um, it really is an amazing opportunity. So that gets me... What's Sorry, that? Matt, one more thing. Pay-per-view. Sure. We've done it. And you want to do a live concert or you have a comedian, you can this becomes a pay-per-view opportunity. Click Big does pay-per-view, which is amazing. A absolutely. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. You can sell in-person tickets and you can sell virtual tickets. And people understand that this is something, you know, they know that the money for the purchases are going towards things, going towards the rental of the venue, the the band, the comedian, the uh parking, food. So they know that, and the same with virtual. This this covers the cost of our our uh, entertainment. So people will pay it, and so it's an opportunity to capture revenue and donations for the organization for people who just you know they can't attend. You would have received nothing. All right. Well, I think our uh, I think we're at the end here. We have some Q and A. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna actually pop open the chat. Oh, I don't. Uh, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't do it right, but. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and pop those in there. Um, and uh, happy to answer those questions. Of course, this webinar will be available. Um, you'll get, receive an email if you didn't, if you weren't able to attend again, you uh, had a, a commitment come up. You know, just like the event stream, it will be available to you uh, at your convenience. Hey, while you're waiting for the questions, Matt, I had a great opportunity. We did something where we had a uh, magician. We were doing the live stream. We had a magician online. Certain people were on Zoom that were Zoomed in. They, in advance, had the deck of cards or something that he wanted them to use. And he did a real interaction with, with uh, by doing a magic trick with people who were online. We had piped in the, the sound from the, uh, I can't remember how we put it together. There were wires going everywhere. But we did a real time uh, Zoom in, in, in Zoom integration into the software and had an had an interaction uh, with this this uh, magician. It was amazing, and that was at the beginning. That was way back. So. Yeah, I think I think what we're going to see, you know, um, new you know up and coming generations feel you know like they want to make their own niche. They want to carve out their own way, and we're seeing we're going to see new and creative ways of fundraising that, um, you know, really kind of uh, change a little bit of the of the history that we've had over the years. You know, Generation X, you know, has really fallen in line with the baby boomers and the way that they raise money and the, the way that they conduct these events. I think we're seeing with, you know, and it, and it doesn't, it's not surprising because of the internet, because of, you know, we have generations now that were born and have lived their whole lives knowing nothing other than the internet. Uh, and so there's no, there's no barrier there that there may have been for us Gen Xers where we started our, started growing up without it. And then boom, it kind of showed up. And, you know, like my son, the way he communicates online is so much more free than me. And he's, there's going to be new and exciting ways for people to build relationships and network uh, through these kind of platforms that um, nonprofits will need to adapt to. Agreed. But, 
having said that, the story will always be the most important thing. And having somebody who can tell it well and engage an audience will always be incredibly important. Well, I think so. Well, we appreciate everybody coming. Did we have a question or two that we need to answer? Or are we every, we answered everything in the presentation? Yeah, that, that is uh, rare, I guess. You know, Lewis, nice job. And uh, thank you all for attending. Um, like I said, this will be available to you offline. And we're always open to uh, questions, inquiries, and, and conversations. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Lewis. everybody. Uh, we'll end it here. All right. Have a good afternoon, everyone.